Hello boys and girls, welcome to Starting With Jesus, where we want to encourage you to start everything you do with Jesus. Today's story is about two brothers who were twins, but weren't anything alike. And we also have a really exciting nature story with Grant and Leah, and they're going to be telling us about some animals that they saw in Africa. And I'm really excited about that. And don't forget that you can download today's coloring page at startingwithjesus.com slash color, and you can find today's coloring page and you can color that during our Bible story. But before we get to any of that, let's get to some singing. It is love that makes us happy, just love that's music. It helps us mind, it makes us kind to others every day. God is love for his little children. God is love, we would be like him. Tis love that makes us happy, tis love that moves away. It helps us mind, it makes us kind to others every day. This world is full of Try some soul to win. God is love for his little children. God is love, we would be like him. Tis love that makes us happy, tis love that smooths away. It helps us mind, it makes us kind to others. Christian, you're a sermon in shoes. Do you know, Christian, you're a sermon in shoes. Jesus calls upon you to spread the gospel news. So walk it and talk it and live it and give it a sermon in shoes. Do you know, Christian, you're a sermon in shoes. Do you know, Christian, you're a sermon in shoes. Jesus calls upon you to spread the gospel news. So walk it and talk it and live it and give it and teach it and preach it and know it and show it a sermon in shoes. Hi, I'm Leah. And I'm Grant. We like exploring nature. How about you? Today we're going to tell you about another adventure we had in Africa and about the special animal we saw on that adventure. Grant, can you tell us a little bit about that adventure? Well, we were in Samburu National Park in Kenya. And that day, Leah and I got to ride with our dad, which is a lot of fun because he tells us about how to get the best pictures possible. 
we were driving down this old dirt bumpy road and our driver said, they've got a cheetah. And so we quickly turned around and raced back to where the cheetah was. And when we got there, there was a cheetah with four cups. And the mama was always looking for food to find because that's a lot of mouths to feed. And so here is a picture that I took of the mama looking for some food on the countryside that maybe she could catch. The cubs were so cute. I took this picture of one that was just so close to our vehicle. Isn't he so cute? They were racing all over the place. They were jumping on the rocks and just having so much fun. Here's a picture that I took of one standing on a rock pretending that he was king of the mountain. And our dad took this picture of them chasing each other on some branches that had fallen on the ground. They had so much energy, they didn't even know what to do with it all. Yeah, I think they wore their mom out because she lay down to rest. Then they just started jumping and climbing all over her. I got this picture of one of the cheetahs jumping right on top of her mom's head. Do you notice the spots on those cheetahs? Do you know why cheetahs have spots? Well, most animals can't actually see very many colors. So the cheetahs, they blend in really well with the yellow and the spots confuses the animals when they're running fast. Another cool fact about them is that they can run faster than any other animal on the planet. The fastest they've been seen to run is 61 miles per hour, which is about 100 kilometers per hour. Leah, what kind of interesting things did you learn about the cheetahs? Well, cheetahs usually give birth to several cubs at once. One mama cheetah gave birth to eight cubs at once. That's a lot of cubs. But they usually have three or four in one litter. Our story this week is about an important family in the Bible. One special thing about them is that they had two sons that were born at the same time, just like those cheetah cubs we saw. When two kids are born at the same time, we call them twins. And if they look just the same, then we call them identical twins. The cubs we saw, there was four of them born at the same time, so we call them quadruplets. The twins in our story this week were named Jacob and Esau. They weren't identical at all. Jacob had smooth skin and Esau had lots and lots of hair. But the big difference between Jacob and Esau was that Jacob loved God and Esau loved himself. I want to love Jesus like Jacob did. Do you? It's time to access this week's Nature Spotlight to see a nature submission that one of you has turned in. Looks like today's Nature Spotlight are pictures sent to us by Micah and Aiden. Location, Arizona. Oh, look how many puppies there are. One, two, three puppies. Oh, I love stinky puppy breath and sloppy puppy kisses. Thank you, God, for giving us energetic little animals. And thanks, Micah and Aiden, for sending this in. I encourage you to get out there and notice God's nature, the big and the small that God has designed especially for you. So grab a grown-up and go explore. Don't forget to take a picture, record a video, or make a drawing of something you find in God's wonderful nature and send it to us at nature at startingwithjesus.com. I can't wait to see it. Do you have a sibling, maybe a brother or a sister, or maybe you have multiple siblings? Are you alike or are you different? Chances are you have some ways that you're alike and some ways that you're different because we have that with all people, right? Maybe you're more alike or maybe you're more different. Isn't it amazing how God created us all so different and alike in different ways? Wow, today's story is about twins that were not alike. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so very much for your love for us. Please be with us now. Send your Holy Spirit into this room and every room where kids and parents are watching. Thank you for your love and bless our time together. In your name we pray, amen. Now, here we go. Let's review. Who are we talking about a lot lately? Abraham. And it might be interesting for you to note that his story is not just in Genesis. In fact, he made it into the Faith Hall of Fame. Where is that, you may ask, Miss Michelle? Hebrews chapter 11. 
You might want to remember that. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 through 10, and it talks about his experience there. And I like the end verse that says, For he, Abraham, waited for the city which, was, which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. He was so excited for heaven, just like I am too. And it's also cool that his wife is also mentioned. So you might want to check out the Faith Hall of Fame later on this afternoon, or whenever you have a chance. Hebrews chapter 11. Now, you may be asking, Miss Michelle, what happened to Ishmael, Abram's first son, by Hagar? Well, I'm glad you asked, because the Bible does tell us what happened to him. He became rich, God blessed him, a desert chief, and he was nomadic, which means that he wandered about. He sadly, though, chose a lot of wives who were idol worshipers, and he didn't have the happiest of homes, as you can imagine. Now, we pick up the story when Abraham had died at 175. That is a very nice long life, isn't it? And interestingly enough, Ishmael and Isaac buried their father together. Isn't that special? Even though they didn't get along a lot, they had, Ishmael had changed enough that they could get along well enough to be together in that sad time. Now, Isaac and Rebekah, who we learned about last week, had been married for 20 years. Wow, that went fast. And still, they had the same problem that Abraham and Sarah had. They had no babies until Genesis 25 happened. Let's go there now. Genesis 25. Genesis 25. Do you like surprises? I do. Genesis 25. Here's the surprise that they had. Verse 23 says, and the Lord said to her, Rebecca, two nations are in your womb. Two people shall be separated from your body. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. Guess what? God was and is the best ultrasound machine. He doesn't need an ultrasound machine. He told Rebecca exactly what was inside her womb, and that was twins, two babies. Now, right away, it tells her that they're not going to get along and that they're going to be two nations. So she knew a lot about her babies before they were even born, and they were born. And what a joyous, happy day that was for Daddy Isaac and Mommy Rebecca. Now, before we get going and more in the story, you need to understand something that was really important back then, and that was the birthright blessing. What, what was the birthright? Well, the birthright went to the firstborn, and in this case, Esau was the first one to come out of Rebekah, and so he was the one to get the firstborn um, birthright, even though it was only by probably a few minutes, right, with twins. And that meant you were the head of the family, you were in charge of daily sacrifices, you were the teacher of the family, you were the priest of the family, kind of like the pastor of the family, and upon the death of your parents, you received two times as much inheritance or the family fortune, the family money and belongings and possessions as the other children did. So those were the benefits of being the firstborn and having that birthright blessing. It was a really big deal. It was really important. And actually it was so important that it could be reassigned. So if the mom and dad saw that the firstborn was not um, following Jesus and doing what they were supposed to be doing, they could say, you're not going to actually get the birthright blessing. And it could also be sold. If the firstborn didn't feel like it, they, they could do that job well, they could sell it. So those are important things to remember. Now, let's jump back to the two twins, right? We have Jacob and Esau were their names. Esau was the firstborn and he was hairy and he liked hunting. Now, to find out more about how they were different, you'll want to check out our podcast and that's Seed Pod for Kids. And you'll find that on our website, www.startingwithjesus.com slash seedpod. And we also have a podcast for our younger listeners, and that's our beginners, Seed Pod Beginners. If you check out week eight, you'll find this story there. Jacob's name means supplanter. What does that mean? Um, trickster. He was, his name meant trickster, or one who does tricks. Interesting, that'll come in later, okay? Now, sadly, the parents had favorites, and you'll want to check out your Bible to find out about that, and that was really sad, something definitely not to do. And in this story, Esau was out hunting, and he got so hungry that he came and he asked Jacob for a bowl of the stew that he was making. The, and he said, I'll sell you my birthright. And maybe he was kind of joking, maybe he was kind of serious, but Jacob took it very serious and sold the birthright got the birthright for a bowl of stew that he was cooking. Wow, 
that was a really big deal. I don't know that Esau realized what a big deal it was. Now, in this story, Esau chose to w marry wives who worshiped idols, and that was a really sad choice that he made. And then Jacob heard something from his mother. One day, Rebekah came and said, Jacob, I just overheard daddy and he was talking to Esau and Esau's going to go out and get an animal and cook it and daddy's going to give Esau the birthright blessing and that's not supposed to happen. So she had a plan. That plan was she was going to cook some food real quick and Jacob was going to go and steal and trick his dad, just like his name said, into giving him the blessing instead. He said, Mom, that plan might work, but I'm not hairy. I don't have hair on my arms and on my chest like, like Esau does, and I don't sound like him. She's like, well, you can pretend. You can do his voice, kind of. You've, you've practiced that before, I'm sure. And then she's like, I'll give you the, the fur from the animal that I kill, and you can strap that to your arms. Now, I'm not quite sure how Jacob fell for this. Um, it was, he was old and his eyesight was going, so that probably helped. But he said, you'll just strap it there and we'll, we'll just like rub some of the animal on you so you smell like animal in the outdoors and it'll work. Do you think it worked? Hmm. You'll have to check that out in Genesis 27 because I don't have time to tell you the whole story today. But I will say the story didn't end well. And sadly, well, we'll find out next week what happened afterwards. Hope you tune in then and until next time. Start with Jesus by exploring His Word. Hello and welcome back to Craft Time. I'm so glad you joined us. Now, if you are experiencing spring where you live, you probably have lots of different birds flying through. So I thought it would be fun this time if we made a craft just especially for our feather friends that Jesus has made for us. So what you need is some sort of peanut butter and you need a plate like a plastic plate or just something that you can dump your bird seed in. I have bird seed here. And you need a toilet paper roll, some string, scissors, and a knife. So the first thing you need to do, I'm actually gonna take my stuff out here and you want to open your peanut butter jar and get peanut butter all around your toilet pole roll here. All right, so see I've got my peanut butter on. Just set that to the side and I'm going to do the best I can to roll this in the seed. I think I'm gonna roll it a couple of times. It looks like stick pretty good. I might just kind of sprinkle some up on the top too to try to get it to stick. Good. And a little bit might fall off. Now, I'm gonna take my string and you could use whatever you have at home. You could use yarn, you could use, this is just some cord that we bought from a crafting place. You could use just whatever you have on hand. Um, if you live on a farm, you could even use some baling twine. We use that for things. All right, so find your end, and what you want to do, uh oh, it's a little tangled. All right, so you wanna kind of measure, because you're gonna wanna go through your roll, and you're gonna wanna make a tie, and then you can hang that on the tree, okay? So I'm gonna say, maybe, does that look good, you think? Okay, I think so too. So we're gonna cut that like that. And I'm going to stick this through the end. Okay, so see, it's gonna work just like so. We're gonna make this, tie it into a tie. And a similar. And then we can hang that on a tree for our feathered friends. It'll be such a fun treat for them. You know what, I'm so glad that Jesus made animals for us to enjoy. I think he was thinking about us, wasn't he, when he made them? Well, you have fun feeding your feathered friends this week. And until next time, remember to start everything you do with Jesus. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Miss Michelle, for that Bible story and Miss Megan for the craft. I really enjoy the craft time and our Bible story time. Now, it's time to review last week's questions. So let's see what they were and if you got them right. 
Shout out to Kevin, Denny, Arisha, Eben, Eric, Isaiah, Analia, Kyle, Nicholas, Dom, Benny, Ashley, Caleb, Nihama, David, Leah, Josie, Nana, Robin, Arthur, Mia, Alexandra, Jenna, Ivan, Connor, Lizzie, Caleb, Boke, Nisi, Andrea, Hannah, Hosanna, Addison, Skylar, Clarice, Micah, Ruby, Nyakong, Elnathan, Owen, Ruella, Daniel, Ellie, Christian, Benjit, Faith, Teotingnif, Drayden, Joseph, Anea, Aiden, Ruena, Cliven, Kyla, Ellie, Safi, Sano, Hudson, and Julia. Great job answering your question. It's time now for our new questions. So go and grab a piece of paper and a pen and write down the questions and then write down your answers and then send them to us at startingwithjesus.com. Let's see if you can get them right. Are you ready for the questions? Okay, question number one. In what book of the Bible is the Faith Hall of Fame? In what book of the Bible is the Faith Hall of Fame? And here's a little bonus. You can get a bonus point. What chapter in that book? What chapter in the book of the Bible is the Faith Hall of Fame? That's a bonus question. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay, question number two. Name two things that were part of receiving the birthright. Name two things that were part of receiving the birthright. And question number three. What does the name Jacob mean? What does the name Jacob mean? You can send your answers to us at answers at startingwithjesus.com. We look forward to seeing your answers. And then we left the day starting in question three nine. Do not lie to one another. Do not lie to one another. Line up one to another. Do not lie to one 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 another. Lie not. Lie not. Lie not one to another. Hi, I'm Joshua. And I'm Jonathan. We're twins that aren't alike. Do not lie to one another. 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 Lie not one to another. Do not lie one to another. Do not lie to one another. Since you have put off the old man with his deed, do not lie to one another. Do not lie to one another, for you have put off the old man and his deed. Do not lie to one another. 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 Since you have put off the old man with his deeds. Do not lie to one another. Goodbye, happy Sabbath. Bye, happy Sabbath. Bye-bye. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Bye. Happy Sabbath, friends. Happy Sabbath, friends. Bye. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Bye. Happy Sabbath. Bye. Bye. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath.
Bye, happy Sabbath. Bye, happy Sabbath. Bye, happy Sabbath. Bye, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, friends. Happy Sabbath, friends. Happy Sabbath, friends. Happy Sabbath, friends. Happy Sabbath. Au revoir. Happy Sabbath. Bye. Happy Sabbath. Bo Saba. Bo Saba. Happy Sabbath, friends. We're going to wear glasses today for this activity because it might be a little bit messy. <laughs> We're going to start by putting a half cup of hydrogen peroxide hmm. in our water bottle. Okay, carefully pour it in. Now we're gonna put 10 drops of food coloring in, and we chose green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one more, 10, good, 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 good. Now we're gonna put one tablespoon of dish soap in there. And the last thing that we have is some yeast and some warm water. I'm gonna put a packet of some dry yeast into some warm water. And we're going to mix the yeast in. We'll mix it for about 30 seconds to make sure it's really well mixed. <laughs> Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. I'm going to pour it in. Let's see what happens. separates that hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. Oxygen is a gas and it tries to get out of the bottle, but the dish soap traps that gas and makes bubbles foam that just goes everywhere. That's pretty fun, isn't it? <laughs> I think it's the pretty fun. The yeast gives it all out. It does, you're right. This also reminds me of our memory verse this week about not lying to others. Lies make messes, a lot of messes, but the truth keeps things clean. Just like our pan kept our table clean. Lies can also hurt people, but like our glasses that kept us safe, the truth also keeps us safe. It's important for us to tell the truth, isn't it? When we tell the truth, we'll be safe, we'll have less messes, and we'll be a whole lot happier. Hey kids, have you heard of our daily devotional podcast called The Seed Pod for Kids? Take a look behind the scenes and meet our team. I start by studying the lessons and looking for key words or stories that I can include. In this lesson, I'm gonna include a story about a snake. Then I go into my closet, set up my equipment, and start recording the episode. Meet Alex, our team volunteer, who takes Bible verses kids have recorded, deletes mistakes, or the parents' coaching. The man in his own image. Own image. The man in his own image. And then he sends the verses to Dylan. This is Dylan, our teen audio engineer, who takes out all of my mistakes. Does the Bible say that the... That... What else does the Bible say that God made on puts all the different elements together, and uploads it for you to enjoy. 
You can listen to all our episodes for free on the major podcast platforms or go to our website, startingwithjesus.com slash seed pod. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so glad you are here. And we have an exciting announcement. We are starting our VBS program in July this year, and our theme is going to be Go. We're going to be talking about the Gospel Commission to go to all the world and share Jesus' love. That means your neighbors, your friends, and people all over the world so that everybody can know about Jesus and his love and his soon coming. So we're going to be sharing some different ways that you can share God's love. We're going to have Bible stories, songs, an activity time, and a time for cooking some different recipes all over the world. Oh, we're really, really excited about it. And you can participate too. If you email us at vbs at startingwithjesus.com and we will send you some ways that you can participate. One of those ways is by sending in a memory verse that we will send you and also a way that you are sharing Jesus with your friends and those around you. So make sure to email us at vbs at startingwithjesus.com so that you can participate in this program. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much that you love us. Thank you so much that you are so good to us. Help us to be like you and help us to continually look to you all the time and that we someday, when we get to heaven, we can be part of those faithful who have served you throughout their lives. We love you and we pray this in your wonderful name, amen. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed week and keep in touch.